Chapter 19 Police Officer Manette took deep breaths and rolled his shoulders back, trying to wake himself up. I'm getting too old for the night shift, he told himself as he strode down the walkway along the shore. The gold lights of Chitana's west side twinkled across the river. Manette thought about the officers assigned to that side of the city. Talk about a cushy job. An officer could walk around with their eyes shut over there and never miss a thing. Not like here, where the streets were getting more crowded and rougher all the time. Manit passed the piers where the big fishing boats docked under the hazy amber orbs. As he walked on, the crimson and amber lights gave way to blue and then to violet. The loud vroom of orb motors faded, replaced by the splashes of bodies diving into the river. Dozens of people, many of them children, treaded water, checking crab traps and hoisting river prawns up to their parents and friends who waded up top with buckets. Night fishers. There were so many more of them now than there had been years ago when he started this patrol. For Manit, it was a hard thing to watch. Most of the parents had once been fishermen, not crabbing around the docks, but out on the river with boats and nets of their own. But the big fishing trawlers, with their fancy, fast motors, had put them out of work. To compete with the big boats, you needed a big motor and an orb to go with it. To get orbs, you needed money. To make money, you had to have a fast boat. And so on, and so on. No wonder he saw so many doing the dangerous work of swimming in the churning water of the river at night. Bennett turned away from the violet-lit shoreline and headed up a dark canal. After a few minutes of searching, he found a familiar figure leaning over the edge, staring down into the black water below. Now he remembered why he kept turning down that cushy west side job. There were people here that mattered to him, people who deserved someone to look out for them. Samkit was one of those people. Manit slowed his steps and checked his pockets for change. He always tried to give Samkit some money if he could. He had no idea how the kids survived. Where did he sleep? What did he eat? Despite his plump cheeks, Samkit was spindly as a stick bug. That never helped when you were living on the streets. And he had trouble breathing, which was why he couldn't hold his own night fishing with the others on the better section of the river. Manit always found him setting his traps in these stagnant back canals. Poor kid. On top of that, he was a Namwan orphan. Most of the time, those kids ended up right back in jail. Well, that wouldn't happen to Samkit. Not if Manit could help it. Hey, Samkit, he called. Just the guy I needed to find tonight. The boy jerked up his head. When he saw Manit, a look of panic flashed over his face. He quickly pushed something, a crab trap perhaps, down under the water. Oh, uh, Officer Manit, I, uh... Manit worried for a second that something was wrong. You okay, kid? You look like you just saw a ghost. Samkit smiled his easygoing smile. He waved the fingers of one hand, gripping tightly on the rope of his crab trap with the other. Me? Oh, yeah, totally fine. Living the dream, as usual. Manette smiled. Good. So, listen, I need some advice. The motor on my boat chugs when it starts. Sounds like it's going to rattle into pieces. Hmm, you got a good connection between the orb and the motor? Because if the connection's bad, it can't... Something gurgled and sputtered in the water below. Manit leaned over the edge of the jetty and saw a boy's face come up to the surface for air. Who's that? he asked, pointing to the water. Oh, him? That's just my cousin, said Somkit. Cousin? So that's how Somkit made do. He must have family in the city who'd taken him in after he got out of Namwan. Officer Manit started to ask the cousin what his name was, but before he could say anything, Samkit leaned over the water. "'You find any crabs?' he shouted to the kid. The boy gasped for air, clutching onto the rope of the crab basket. "'What? No, I... I can't breathe.' "'Well, try again,' yelled Samkit. "'You think they're just going to jump into your hands? You gotta catch them.' Samkit reached down and pushed his cousin's head, sending him back underwater. Samkit shook his head at Officer Manit. "'He's lazy.' I do it myself, but the guy's got to learn somehow. So, 
Anyway, make sure the motor connection is clean. If that's not the problem, it could be you just need a new starter. The cousin reemerged at the surface and took a big gulp of air. He managed two more gasping breaths before Somkit shoved him back underwater. You can get a starter for cheap at the light market, bottom level, continued Somkit. If you tell them I sent you, they'll give you the wholesale price. Hey, that's just what I needed to know, said Manit. Here, this is for you. He held out the coins from his pocket. Oh, nah, said Somkit. You don't need to do that. Go on, take it, pressed Manit. You just saved me a bunch of time and money. This is the least I owe you. Somkit bowed his thanks and took the money. The good-for-nothing cousin came up for air, empty-handed again. Somkit rolled his eyes. I'll be needing this money if my lazy cousin keeps coming up with no crabs. He reached down and shook his fist at the boy in the water before pushing him under again. Get back there and don't come up again unless you got a crab in each hand. Manit laughed and turned to go. You tell him, Somkit. I gotta finish my rounds. He called over his shoulder. Hey, you and your cousin watch out for yourselves, okay? We just got word at the police station that there's a dangerous criminal on the streets. He's a runaway from prison. He was hiding out in a temple down south. You see any weird people around, you let me know, okay? Somkit nodded gravely. Sir, if I see anything out of the ordinary, you'll be the first to know.